Don't trip. It's all good. Don't trip. Oh, Jesus. At the 79th Annual Academy Awards, Will Ferrell, Jack Black and John C. Riley came together in an ode to the unsung comedians who sit out every awards season. And it's wonderful. I thought I'd get to have dinner with Jeremy Hyers. By the end of the bit, they hit upon a solution. Just roll some prestige dramas or stirring biopics into your showboating repertoire, and so too can those shiny statues be yours. He's right. I'm gonna reread that script about the guy who gets lead poisoning and then sues a major corporation. There's not a laugh in there! Yes! It's a sardonic observation that writer director Adam McKay seems to have taken as a personal challenge. One that eventually led to Oscar's glory with 2015's The Big Short. Smash cut to the tail end of 2021 as Don't Look Up streaked across the horizon, burning bright with red carpet royalty and a righteous message of incalculable importance. We try to tell you this whole time, it's right there! It's so why is the result a sustenance-free satire that fails so completely to engage on any political, intellectual, or human level, by the end you'll be rooting for your own annihilation? Don't Look Up follows two astronomers and their futile, increasingly farcical attempts to save the world from an approaching comet. There's 100% certainty of impact. Please, don't say 100%. Can we just call it a potentially significant event? Yeah. Yes. It's a film that takes aim at those who would choose cash in hand comfort and blissful ignorance over our continuing existence, and it does so under the guise of a boisterous satire. One in which political leaders, corporations, and the general public bury their collective heads in the sand and refuse to acknowledge their impending oblivion. It's roughly five to ten kilometers wide. An extinction level event. Well, let's not be dramatic here. The most timeless, affecting works of satirical comedy tend to apply surgical precision and a scalpel-like sharpness to their concerns and critiques. McKay knows this as well as anyone. Ask yourself the question, what's my audience? Who am I talking to? How do I want to talk to them? How do I want them to respond? And you've got to be really specific about that. We just made a decision that we were going to try and talk to the broadest audience possible. We weren't going to make a niche movie for certain groups of people. We were going to try and do the biggest movie we could. Everyone should be panicking right now, okay? Don't cry. Come I know. on. Which isn't to say you can only take on one adversarial entity at a time. Sorry to bother you challenges capitalistic structures, slavery, and racial power dynamics without ever feeling overstuffed. Dr. Strangelove takes on Cold War hysteria, nationalism, and sexually repressed American masculinity. The difference between those good examples and a woefully poor effort like Don't Look Up is the difference between lining up several expertly aimed successive shots at defined targets and indiscriminately firing a blunderbuss into a random crowd. McKay's claims of intentional broadness only extend so far as assembling an eye-watering cast of industry darlings and ensuring they never stray from the one joke they have to tell. I hope you find the concept of absurd denial in the face of certain destruction both humorous and harrowing, because it's just about the only gag you're gonna hear for the next two hours. Every single man, woman, and child on this planet is going to die. We're all 100% for sure gonna fucking die! And I think we're all gonna die! Oh, oh. Tell me we're all gonna die, dude. We're all gonna die. Oh. oh, boy. McKay has responded to the mixed critical consensus surrounding Don't Look Up by effectively saying, if you don't like it, it's because you don't get it. That's not entirely 
accurate. The comet is an obvious stand-in for the encroaching catastrophe of climate change. The public officials who ignore or attempt to exploit the comet for their own ends are subtle as shit-scented shampoo takes on real political and corporate stooges. This is just Fox News with a more tasteful wardrobe. But as we all learned from Deep Impact and Armageddon, it's not enough to lob conventional weapons at the surface of a problem. Don't Look Up doesn't care about articulating facts in a digestible manner that promotes discussion or environmental activism. Nor is it looking to reach across the aisle and discuss the hows and whys of climate denialism or the growing trends towards the right wing's weaponization of environmental agendas. No, the whole thing just feels a lot like this Simpsons clip. It's so gratifying to leave you wallowing in the mess you've made. You're screwed. Thank you. Bye. It's just spread thin cynicism. That is so refreshing. Mm. I think we're all tired of the politics. Yeah, yeah. Satire is a creative tool whereby mocking disbelief, comedic barbs, and bitterly ironic contrivance are meant to inform and mobilize an audience against those who callously fail them. None of which lands here, in part because the central premise is inherently flawed. By using a comet as an allegory for climate change, they're conflating and confusing two extremely different problems. Global warming is a slow-moving, almost intangibly complicated issue. It's been on the horizon since the Industrial Age, and the ways in which we aim to offset it will gradually alter the economic, geographical, technological, and sociological landscape of the entire planet. There's a disconcerting amount of scepticism and denial because the effects are so gradual and abstract, measured in the change of decimals over decades. To some, the answers seem expensive and unproven. Then you've got to factor in the jobs, stability, and voter bases built around carbon-emitting industries. Okay, so that's global warming. And this is what an asteroid smashing into us six months from now that's bigger than Mount Everest would mean to every person on the planet. Somebody down 911! What McKay does with this completely unfit allegory is narrow the end of day's shame and blame to American apathy, Trumpism, daytime television, and social media, all of which came long after the advent of greenhouse gases. In short, there is nothing in common between the cause, effect, and contingencies in place to prevent climate change and a massive comet? And once your allegory falls apart, all you're left with are these wake-up sheeple generalities. And do you know why they want you to look up? Do you know why? Because they want you to be afraid. So let's look beyond the United States. What about the other 7.5 billion living, breathing, polluting people on this pale blue dot? Well, Don't Look Up doesn't seem to care. Sure, there's one lip service scene where they toss out that uh, some other nations gather together to try and fix the problem, but they screwed up because they are also idiots. And it's a shoulder shrug at best, and at worst, yet another entry in McKay's long line of movies that lament how self-absorbed and insular America is, whilst contributing to, reinforcing, and doing nothing to challenge that same brand of American exceptionalism. I know a lot of this sounds harsh, but I actually really like Adam McKay, and he used to be able to tackle issues without this unbearable smugness. Anchorman was about how the news suddenly changed from a journalistic document into infotainment, Talladega Nights ruffled the hair of blindly patriotic narcissism, the other guys even managed to meld its wacky weirdness with the murky underbelly of corporate accountability. Then came The Big Short, a funny, informative, albeit flagrantly westernized look at the 2007 global financial crisis, 
and it proved McKay's knack for sugaring the pill of serious concerns. And then an unfortunate thing happened. He began to fancy himself as an important filmmaker. Sorry, I need to reiterate that with all caps. <clears throat> IMPORTANT FILMMAKER Which is why 2018's Vice felt like two hours of abhorrently edited screeching about the many ways in which human whoopee cushion Dick Cheney is evil, and it's that same brand of knee-rubbing, state-the-obvious aggrandizing smeared all over the lens with Don't Look Up. A film that opts for two equally unappealing flavours of farce. First, there's their everyone's to blame centrist fallacy, where the general public and daytime TV are given just as much scrutiny as the government and big tech. Then we have the second flavour, one I like to call preaching to the choir whilst crucifying the deplorables. Predominantly white, upper-middle-class intellectualism is being prevented from saving us because everyone else is an asshole, too poor, or too stupid to matter. Which is a tongue-clucking, classist, ethnically one-note mentality that teaches nothing, alienates those most likely to need information, and writes off anyone without immediate or unfettered access to non-partisan coverage of the facts. As Andy Meek perfectly puts it, this is all just a primal scream from the adherents to a cause who look down on the people they ostensibly want to save. No human was ever de-radicalised, no catastrophe ever de-escalated, by kicking it in the chin and calling everyone who disagrees with you a piece of shit. If you need any evidence of that, just look at what happened in 2016. This is, this is my fault, people like me. When are we going to learn? The left have given up putting any argument across at all to the point where Clinton is considered left, liberal. Throwing insults doesn't work anymore. The only thing that works is fucking bothering, doing something, and all you have to do is engage in the debate. Talk to people who think differently to you and persuade them of your argument. It's so easy and the left have lost the art. Socially conscious satire and cinema go together like Quentin Tarantino and Open Top Sandals. All of these films show strength to power, gluttonous self-destruction, governmental ineptitude, and societal imbalance, whilst keeping their eye on the prize of entertaining and understanding their audience. McKay's hypocritical half-measures don't belong in the same discussion as the existential climate change nightmare of First Reformed or the exaggerated opulent waste of Wally. No, Don't Look Up is more like a prestige, best picture-baiting take on idiocracy, albeit with slightly less eugenics. This is a film content to just cower behind its blatantly correct thesis that global warming is kind of a big deal, without the empathy or exploratory instinct to understand its nemesis. Nothing here is serious, engaging, or revelatory enough to earn its groan-inducing, tonally noxious circle-jerking. It holds fast to an allegorical interpretation of a truth most of us fundamentally believe, but one delivered with such smug, vinegar-stroking arrogance, it's closer to the pointing Spider-Man meme than a coherent message. And after trekking through this desperately unfunny, mean-spirited rot, the end of the world as we know it sounds absolutely fine to me. A rallying cry of Armageddon is a much better film than Don't Look Up for our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire MD, Becky O, and Nicholas Slayer Revere, and some collective solace that Kate Blanchett was really great in this and walked away unscathed for all these incredible folks who support us over on Patreon. So what parts of it did you think worked, what parts did you think faltered, and what are your favourite political satires that really do hit the nail on the head? Let us know down in the comments, and make sure you share these videos, leave a comment, click the like button and subscribe, and if you want to see your name in the credits or sign up to the In Frame Out Film Club, consider checking out our Patreon at the link in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is In Frame Out. Thank <laughs> you.